So how does inflation or deflation impact the residential real estate market, the housing market, right? You hear a lot of different terms if you're following financial markets, if you're thinking about your investments, or if you're just trying to protect the value of your home, or whatever the case may be. You'll hear, you know, the global economy, the local economy, housing market, residential market, commercial markets, bond markets, stock markets, currency markets, all these crazy things. Like what is going on? If you're interested in the topic of inflation, you're probably thinking about value of one kind or another. And we want to talk in this video about real estate and how it fits into that conversation, right? So what is inflation? I'm not an economist. I'm not a currency expert, but real estate is what we do. And so we pay attention to these things. So let me give you a couple of quick, basic, probably overgeneralized, but simple definitions, right? So what is inflation? It's when you know, the value of your dollar actually goes down, right? So there's more dollars typically is one of the causes. And so the value of your dollar goes down or your currency, whatever the case may be. All right. So let's just say, you know, I have a dollar and there's not very many dollars out in circulation. It's worth a certain amount. I have that same dollar and a whole bunch more dollars are out in circulation. That dollar is probably worth less now because there's a whole bunch more of them and people tend to protect them a little bit less. They're a little bit riskier with them. Prices start to go up is one of the effects of inflation. And people tend to spend that money in a riskier, you know, more kind of loosey goosey type way. Well, when that happens, how does that impact real estate? Well, not every time, but most of the time, at least one class of real estate, meaning residential being one class, commercial land, uh, and, and certainly there are others, industrial and things like that. The values of those things typically go up. Not all the time, but typically, right? So if people have more dollars to spend and they have to spend more dollars to get things, real estate typically is one of those things that requires more dollars to get, right? So in an inflationary period, values of homes oftentimes go up, right? So it takes more dollars to get into a house because people have more dollars or um, each dollar is worth less. And so they've got to put more of them in to get the asset, right? So that's kind of annoying, you know, you know, pile of, of definitions there. But let, let's talk specifically about what most people really want to know when they ask this question, right? So if my dollar is becoming less and less value valuable, uh, then what do I do with it? Do I hold it as it just loses value or do I invest it where I can capture that, uh, I can recoup at least the amount of, of inflation. So let's just say, you know, inflation's 3% per year. If I saved $100,000, I'm going to lose $3,000 a year in value. Same amount of dollars, but they're worth less, right? Well, do I then put that in a savings account? Well, can I, can I earn at least inflation and then some? Do I put it in stocks? Do I put it in bonds? Do I put it in residential, real estate, or commercial? Um, do I lend it out at a certain rate? Well, real estate tends to be a safe, stable alternative in the long haul in almost every situation. Now, some people will argue that. I'm sure they'll show up in the comments. We'll deal with that there. But generally speaking, over the long haul, we're talking decades long periods, real estate historically has always rebounded or uh, appreciated in value, right? Now, again, someone somewhere is gonna find an exception of certain property, a certain property class in a certain market, and of course those exist. But generally speaking, the value of real estate is going up, especially housing. But something I want to point out here is the difference between um, currency, a dollar is currency. It's not even technically under a true definition, money. And I don't want to get way too into that, but money is backed by something, right? So money might be gold or silver or uh, lumber or something like that. It could be exchanged for things, but it's got some real value. Currency is oftentimes built on trust and the dollar in the United States is. And again, I'm not a currency person, but the fact of the matter is dollars work. We take them for things because we trust that they're worth something. Well, when, as dollars inflate and they become less valuable, we start to kind of lose trust in that. And real estate can be a really great place to trade dollars for land, dollars for houses on land, because let's say the value of the dollar goes to zero or it goes super, super low. I still have the same amount of paper or metal and coins and currency 
but it's not any good to me. Well, I may own an acre of land and I couldn't even sell it. Let's just say it's lost all of its market value. I can't sell it for anything, but I can still use it. I could grow a crop on it. I could pitch a tent and sleep on it. I could build a house on it. Um, I could rent it to someone maybe. And you know, if it's even if it's fully lost its value to be rented, I can still use it for something. I could cut the trees down and sell them. I could dig a pond and grow fish or something. It is a real tangible physical asset as compared to paper currency or coin currency, or even some things you could invest that currency in, potentially a stock certificate. It's real, it's a real claim on a business unless that business goes out of business. And then it's a worthless piece of paper or a worthless digital reference to a piece of paper, right? So big picture here, the answer to the question is how does inflation impact real estate? Well, focusing on residential real estate. So normally as inflation goes up, the value of residential real estate goes up with it, right? People are looking for real tangible places to put those dollars and residential real estate especially is very real. So are other areas of real estate, but residential is the most essential form of real estate, right? People need homes. They don't have to be huge homes, but they need something. People need some sort of shelter. We don't necessarily need shopping malls and restaurants and even warehouses and offices those are fairly essential, but not nearly as simple as essential as residential. So in an inflationary period, typically people are looking for something more real to put their dollars in, right? Stocks are sometimes a good alternative, but we talked about why that's not always ideal. That company can fully go out of business and then your investment can go to nothing, right? Bonds are similar, things like that uh, are somewhat tangible. Real estate tends to be really, really attractive because in addition to its market value, it has a utilitarian value, a usefulness to it. So again, short answer, typically, not all the time, but when we have inflation, we have an increase in the value of residential real estate. Not all the time, but real estate is oftentimes an alternative, a more secure alternative to lots of investments, not just the dollar, not just inflation issues, but if the stock market is struggling. A lot of times people want to get into real estate. Um, if um, incomes are down, a lot of times people look to go create passive secondary incomes in residential real estate with rentals and things like that. Now, it's important to reference things like land and commercial industrial. Oftentimes they benefit, but typically there's a cause to inflation and the cause of inflation will typically have a negative impact on at least one or more of those other real estate market segments. Sometimes it can even have a negative impact on residential, but the others are more often than not, those are more volatile than residential. So, you know, we bounced around, we covered a lot of issues here. We talked a little bit about the stock market, a pretty good amount about currency, a little bit about the difference in money and currency, and a whole lot about residential real estate being, historically speaking, a safe place to go when you have questions about inflation or market volatility or value. So if you're thinking at all about getting into residential real estate or getting out of residential real estate, whether that's due to inflation, deflation, stock market volatility, income volatility, economic volatility whatsoever, if you're thinking about getting into or out of residential real estate anywhere in Texas, especially here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, Feel free to reach out to us. You can go online to overunderagent.com. You can just search my name, Todd Tremonti, on the internet, or our contact information is right below. If we didn't cover a part of this topic, drop that in the comments below. Ask your question there. We read every single one of those. We'd be glad to connect with you there. Or again, find us online, overunderagent.com. Check out the rest of the channel. I'll see you on the next video.